Welcome to the first video of Gene Expressions. This video is an overview of proteins and DNA, and it's gonna form a lot of the basis for what we'll learn in future videos. So it's important you kind of get this foundation down first. All right, so what proteins are, because it's gonna come up a lot, are called long polypeptide chains. Poly means many, and peptides are what they're made up of. They're called amino acids. So this is the polypeptide chain right along here. And this is what a protein actually looks like compared to what we usually draw it like in real life. There's a whole lot of helixes, there's stuff that rub up next to each other and it's folded in a funny way. And actually the way that it's folded is critically important to what it will end up doing. So it's called folded to function. And we'll learn later on that if it unfolds, it stuffs up. So the general uses of proteins, which you'll need to remember, are it's to build things, they help us grow, they help repair things, and in immunity, they help fight infection for us. But the major things that are gonna come up again and again are the fact that they are enzymes. They make reactions go faster, they bring things together. And the second thing is that if the structure of this enzyme changes or this protein changes, then things will go wrong in our bodies. So those things are gonna come up again and again. And that is because enzyme activity is essential for cells, and cells are obviously essential for life. If we don't have them, we don't have anything. Okay, now let's zoom down into DNA structure. We're gonna to need to learn all of the names because we'll keep using these names in the future. So looking at DNA structure, although we draw it straight like a ladder, it's actually in this double helix structure. So you need to remember the term double helix, which just means it's a ladder which is basically being twisted round and around and around. Now looking within that, this ladder, or the kind of length of the ladder, is made up of alternating phosphates, these little things here connecting the rungs, and sugars, which are the main things that connect right into the bases. And these, what are called nitrogenous bases, are actually what form the DNA code. So this combination of phosphate, sugar, and base, overall is called a nucleotide monomer, or just a nucleotide sometimes. The reason it's called monomer is it means just one, and they obviously come in a big string of DNA where there are many. So those are terms you need to know. Now when we specifically look at bases, you're gonna see that A is always matched up with T, that's adenine and thymine. You just generally need to remember A and T. And also guanine and cytosine get matched up, that's G and C all together. So you'll never see a G with an A or a G with a T, it's always with C and vice versa. Down the track, this letter T will actually be exchanged for a U when you're transporting the DNA message. Not in DNA, but later on. We'll cover that later. So U or uracil might come up later when we talk about mRNA. Okay, so we've heard a lot about DNA. We know it's the genetic code for our body. What does that actually mean? DNA is the code to create proteins. So everything your DNA does is telling your body how to make a protein that will perform all of the functions your cells need to do to live, and hence what you need to do to live. This process of reading the DNA code and turning it into a protein is called protein synthesis. And there's two separate, quite important videos on this, which provides the core of this whole topic here. So what that's roughly made up on, to give you an overview, is you have all the DNA caught up in chromosomes inside your nucleus. Then something comes in and reads that DNA and turns it into what's called mRNA. That basically means they write down this genetic code on a message, that's what the M stands for, messenger RNA, and that message gets taken out into the cells where they read that message, the message then tells them how to make a protein, which will do all of the functions you need to in cells. That process of reading the DNA right through to making the protein is called protein synthesis. So here's what you need to know from this video. You need to know that a protein is a long polypeptide chain, and you will need to remember that word polypeptide. And it's made up of amino acids. So when you're making a protein, it's one amino acid after another. And the proteins perform many of the functions in our body that we need to live. And the major use here is for enzymes actually performing the day-to-day -day routines of keeping your cell alive. But it can also be for structures, like keeping your nails hard or making sure your skin is tough. We also learned about DNA. This is the genetic code of our bodies, and it is the code that designs proteins, or tells our body how to make proteins. And all of the terms you need to know for that are one, the structure is a double helix. So it's a twisted ladder. Say double helix, not twisted ladder. And this is made up of little phosphates, of sugars, these big ones in the middle, and nitrogenous bases, or sometimes just called bases. Now all three together, the phosphate, the sugar, and the base makes a nucleotide, or a nucleotide monomer. Those are the terms you need to remember. 
Also remember that in base pairs, T will always go with A and G will always go with C, except in mRNA, which we'll learn about later, where T is replaced with U. Now, protein synthesis is the process of reading this genetic code of your DNA and turning it into a protein. And the two terms we'll use, the actual reading of the DNA is called transcription and making a message. And translation is then turning the message into a real protein. So we'll cover those in future videos. All right, let's look at a question now. We need to describe the structure of a DNA molecule and include its important features. Here we have a picture of our DNA molecule. You can draw one in your answer. Remember, we've matched A with T, C with G, and we're going to draw our sugar and our phosphate. You don't need to do a perfect pentagon. A circle is fine. So you can point out on your diagram, honestly, it's the easiest way, the little phosphates that connect the sugars together. You also point out the sugars, which connect right through to the bases. And then label these nitrogenous bases. You can call them bases, but this is the correct term, and you'll get brownie points for it, and possibly real points too. And all together, you can label this a nucleotide monomer, the phosphate sugar base combination. So when you're actually writing something to go with your diagram, you can tell them about DNA. It's always good to define terms right at the start. It's the genetic code for our bodies, and this is the design for our proteins. This is made up of phosphates, a sugar, and a nitrogenous base. So all together, these are nucleotide monomers, or you can just call them nucleotides. And these link together to form a chain, which is in a double helix shape or in a double helix structure. So hopefully all of this makes sense. You've got a bit of an overview about how your DNA writes the code for proteins. You hopefully understand that proteins are a very important part of your body and that we'll go into more detail in future videos.